Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sherry Gibson and I am doing today's video about pronunciation. This video is aimed to those teachers who may be newer to online teaching or just not as familiar with pronunciation and articulation development. I am a speech therapist and I've worked for over 15 years in helping young children learn how to speak clearly. In the last five years, at my brick and mortar school, we have had a lot of students arrive in our small town in West Central Illinois who are from other countries. During this time, I've had to learn all the different intricacies of accents and culture and the different variations of a English language learner would bring to the classroom. I found this work extremely rewarding and I've learned a lot about articulation development and how learning a second language will affect your ability to produce the speech sounds. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the short U sound. The short U sound makes the uh sound. In a prior position, I worked as a instructor at a university and I taught several courses. One of the classes I taught was on phonics and phonetics. I taught speech, future speech therapists how to transcribe words into phonetics. So here's a brief lesson for you. We have the way to transcribe the short U sound. We have the caret, which is for the uh sound when the syllable is stressed. The caret is used if the word is one syllable. So a word like cup would be used like this. If the word is two syllables, then the uh sound, the short U vowel sound, that is in the unstressed syllable would be written like this. This is called a schwa. You may have heard of it. So for those of you who are newer to transcribing, transcription is done when someone is speaking so that you can get a clear picture of exactly how they are producing their speech sounds. I do this during my regular speech sessions as well as sometimes when I'm teaching online because then I can get a very accurate uh, of an accurate presentation of what my student is saying. I've found that many of our students struggle with producing vowel sounds. Specifically, they struggle with producing the short vowel sounds. If our students are from China, many of them struggle with the short vowel sounds because they do not have some of these sounds present in their native language. So we have to teach them not just how to speak it, but also how to discriminate between the sounds. Everything starts with discrimination. So I will do some activities with students to help them discriminate between the uh sound and the ah uh sound. Those two sounds sound similar, can be difficult. Another difficult one that I often see is being able to hear and discriminate between the eh sound and the i eh sound, the short e versus the short i. So, what else can we do to help our students? So number one, help them discriminate between the sounds. So give them words that are exactly the same with the vowel sound different. Number two, we can give them actual physical prompts. So one thing that I do with the short U sound is I will use visuals like this. It shows a. Uh, Many of our students do not open their mouth enough to produce their vowel sounds. They want to produce everything with a closed mouth. So for the uh, I over-exaggerate and open my mouth wide. Uh, uh, as you can see in this picture. Another thing that I talk about is my tongue. Uh, if you see, uh, my tongue is cupped like this. We don't do anything else with our articulators when we do our vowel sounds. So that makes it really hard for us to describe to them what to do with their mouths. Just open up and the sound comes out. It's not always that easy. All vowel sounds are voiced. What that means is our voice box is vibrating when we say them. Try it. Uh, 
you can feel the vibration. If you say the s sound, the s, s, no vibration. It is an unvoiced consonant sound. So again, with the uh sound, we open our mouth and the uh is produced by the sound coming out the center of our tongue. One fun activity I like to do with my students is to use actual physical props to help them. So for example, sun, sun, sun. As you can see, I use visual cues. With the S, I will do S and call it the snake sound. S. I tell my students to bite and blow. S. Now, this looks unnatural at first. After they get it, they're able to release their jaw and not be so clenched. S. But by telling our students this, it keeps their tongue in their mouth. Because as you know, some of our students like to produce their S like this. Or so we get not a very great S sound. We do not want a frontal lisp. Okay, so we have sun and cup and duck. I like to keep the words very short and simple and think about the consonant sounds that are surrounding the vowel you're working on. One thing that I've seen in some curriculum of different online teaching platforms is they have target sounds for phonics or articulation or pronunciation that are later developing sounds like the TH sound. I posted below some information about the TH sound. not expected to develop until closer to age seven, but yet I've seen it in curriculum for students that are supposed to be preschool age. So we're asking them to say, think, think, but yet we keep getting fink, fink, or bink. They're just not developmentally ready to produce it. Some students are, and that's great, but it's sometimes challenging to explain to parents that Really, they shouldn't be able to say that sound yet. And so what I do is I then provide some visuals of resources so that they can understand by looking at a chart of developmental norms. Okay, what else can we do? Try to make it fun. One activity that I've done with some of my students is I'll use the dice at our local Dollar Tree store. As you can see, I have different words on here based on the level of where the student is. If the student is really struggling to produce a vowel sound correctly, I may just have the vowel sound by itself. Uh. I may also pair it with a consonant like ba or da. Then we move on to short words. Mud. Mud, mud. They love it when I throw and catch and then can show it in the screen. Up, up, up. As you can see, I use a lot of different hand gestures to help them understand what to do with their mouths. If you Google, there are many different ways of using visual phonics or cued speech, many different terms. Basically, if you stick to the same thing and help the parents understand, that's the goal. Thanks for coming to my classroom. Today we learned about the uh sound and different ways we can help our students discriminate between the vowels and also say those vowels correctly. I hope you join me again for my next video. I will continue to post videos to help with pronunciation. Have a great day. Goodbye.